I was talking to my cousin Jamie. Uh, he's Aunt Colleen's oldest son. He lives in Florida. And uh, I was telling him about these uh, videos that I'm making. And uh, he had already uh, seen one. He somehow got ex with he stumbled across it or heard about it on Facebook. My daughter was trying to promote my videos on Facebook. That may have been how I didn't ask him how he knew I'd made it. But he had uh, seen the first one I made, and uh, so he knew what I was talking about. And I said, you can't help but talk about uh, antiques uh, uh, and uh, heart, the development of uh, hard times uh, country furniture without mentioning your mom and so I said uh, she comes up a lot she probably mentioned in that first video several times and she comes up in about every one of them I could have named these videos uh, the Aunt Colleen Chronicles but I didn't uh, but the reason I was trying to get a hold of uh, my cousin was he, he's got a lot of old family pictures and I wanted to uh, ask him if he had uh, some pictures of Aunt Colleen that he could send me because I knew I could use them from time to time in the videos. And uh, I told him about this one that I was making of Patsy Faust. Of course, he knew Patsy. And uh, he said, I got a great picture for that. He said, I got a picture of Mom and Patsy uh, standing in a creek when they were girls. And uh, he said, I think it was 1941 just a little bit while we were still talking on the phone he said I found it and he said uh, it was 1943 I was wrong but it was 1943 so both of them were born I think in 1925 so this is Patsy Faust and uh, my Aunt Colleen uh, standing in the creek I don't know where it is but I guess Owensburg you can see part of the, where it is up behind them on the on the bank there but they're standing barefoot in the creek when they're about 18 years old. And you talk about a couple of pistols, uh, those girls. And so I've included it in this video. I hope you enjoy uh, looking at it. Uh, Aunt Colleen and Patsy Faust when they were teenage girls. Another thing, uh, Aunt Colleen often uh, worked in the antique shop for Patsy. Patsy needed a day off or even a part of a day off. A lot of times she'd call Aunt Colleen and say, could you come in and watch the shop for a little while? I'm going to here, I'm going there, I don't feel good or whatever. So, uh, And maybe Aunt Colleen even worked for her on a regular schedule part-time just to give her a day off. I'm not sure. I just know that Aunt Colleen worked in the Union Mule. Uh, on some kind of a regular, irregular basis for Patsy. And there's a lot of times that I went by there and Aunt Colleen was in there. And it, sometimes you couldn't tell whether she was in there working or she just in there uh, visiting with Patsy uh, because sometimes they both worked at the same time. Uh, maybe whenever there was a sale going on or it was a busy weekend or something, she'd have Aunt Colleen come in and work with her. But other times Aunt Colleen would just work the shop by herself. And so... Uh, both of these women, uh, their love for antiques, uh, and my association with them uh, as a young man and right up until I was uh, not so young anymore and they were old ladies and uh, they had a great influence on what I like in antiques and uh, my appreciation of all things old. Patsy and he, she and Don both just loved that old uh, milk paint, grungy looking stuff, and I love it too now. I, I, I'd rather have a piece like that than anything I can think of, but back in those days uh, I was more into other things. That pie safe uh, was all that color green that everybody loves today. Uh, I think it probably started out a little darker than that, and then, and then that fades into that color, but it's a kind of a green apple green when it gets done fading into about three or four different colors. And they have been painted uh, various times, uh, white and green, a dip, more than one color green. I think there was some blue in it, and it was pretty crinkled up and had a lot of alligatoring, and you could see four, four or five or six colors of 
uh, paint history on that thing. And it had some great hand punch tins. Uh, I'm going to say they were fish, but I'm not sure. I might, I might be confusing it with another pie safe. But if they weren't fish, they were tulips or uh, lilies or something, something that you don't see very often. Uh, I, I think that was the one that had the fish uh, hand punch tins that were fish. But anyway, uh, just to give you an idea how good it was, Becky Jenkins uh, was Becky Jenkins, Doug Jenkins' wife, and this was back when uh, they were a lot younger, and Becky was uh, way more involved in the business than she is nowadays. But and if you don't know who Becky and Doug Jenkins are, uh, you're not from Southern Indiana. I'm gonna tell you that they're they're just legends and antiques, and you'll hear more about them too over the course of these videos. But uh, just uh, take my word for it. Uh, Becky and Doug are legends, and they know good antiques, and they have always uh, been uh, involved with antiques. And this particular pie safe, Becky wanted it, but. Uh, uh, and was trying to buy it, and she was in there, you know, I wasn't in there every day. I told you I went into the, the uh, Union Mill usually about once a week. Sometimes maybe I'd stop in just to look around besides going in there for lunch and talking to Patsy, but uh, after they got that pie safe and Becky knew it was there, uh, it was three or four times that I was in there that Becky was in there too trying to buy that pie safe off Patsy, and uh, Patsy wanted... Uh, a lot of money for it. I think maybe twelve or thirteen hundred dollars she wanted for it, and uh, they finally got pretty close. Becky, had, I think her offer was like eight hundred, and uh, Patsy was down to eleven fifty or something like that. But they couldn't get any closer than that. And one day Becky came up with the idea to trade a butcher block that her and Doug had, and she had brought some pictures of that butcher block up there, and Patsy liked. That's another thing she liked. She liked old butcher blocks, and this one was a really good example of one in really good shape. And Patsy could just see that thing in her kitchen there in her uh, new salt box house. And uh, I could tell that she wanted it, and her and Becky were probably going to get together before it was over with. But uh, they eventually did, Becky eventually did end up with that pie safe. And uh, part of the deal was they traded that butcher block. Uh, in on it. Pat, uh, Patsy allowed them uh, money for the butcher block and sold them the pie safe. And that's just another part of that story that I may or may not edit out of this, but it was, it was part of it I thought was interesting. After uh, Patsy passed on and then uh, Don, her husband, he died uh, some years later, uh, they had an auction. Our family had an auction, and oh boy, it was a good auction. In fact, they had more than one. I think they had two, and then I think they, before they even had the auctions, I think they had some yard sales, which I reg regrettably didn't know about and missed. But uh, they had two auctions, and they sold lots of stuff. And uh, one of the things that they did was they sold her Crocs, and they sold Choice on her Crocs. You know what I think about selling Choice, but. I'll talk about that in a different video. They were selling choice Crocs and they had a whole bunch of Crocs on the table and uh, <laughs> most of them came off her stairway. Uh, but there were some others too, some bigger ones with some more elaborate uh, markings on them. And But they were almost all the old gray Crocs with the blue markings on them. And I cringe to think that uh, I probably sold her uh, 15 or 20 of those myself because I think the cheapest one they sold that day brought like $135 something like that and the most expensive one they sold that day brought $3,000 now it was a big one and I never sold her uh, you know it was about uh, yay tall and uh, had advertising on it and I'm sure I didn't sell that one to her but it brought $3,000 and then the next uh, uh, most expensive one after that, I think, brought either fifteen or thirteen hundred. There might have been one that brought fifteen and one that brought thirteen. I think that's the way it was. But uh, they were all a little bigger than any of them that I'd ever sold her, so I don't have to regret selling her something for uh, forty dollars that brought th three thousand dollars. 
uh, anyway. I've got a letter that uh, I wrote to Patsy. Patsy uh, had lupus uh, most of her adult life and she sometimes struggled with her health and uh, wasn't well. Uh, and then towards the end uh, of her life, she uh, it, things got her down pretty easy, and so she was uh, uh, not out in public like she uh, was back when she was had the business open. And uh, there was a period of time there uh, that I don't know whether other people saw or not, but I didn't see her. She wasn't out and about where I would have run into her. And, I didn't see her, and uh, I got by the house once in a while to uh, talk to her, Don, but it, it, I got the feeling like that was an uh, imposition for me to be there. And sometimes I didn't know when to go and when not to go, so gradually over time I quit doing that more and more. And so I hadn't seen her in a good while. I got to thinking about her one day, and I thought, well, I'm going to write her a letter. And uh, I did write her a letter. And... Uh, I didn't know it at the time, but she treasured that letter. After she passed, Don uh, talked to me, and he said, I'm going to uh, read your letter at the at Patsy's funeral. And I said, it, and I'd, I'd forgotten about the letter, actually, and I said, read my letter. And he said, yeah. He said, in fact, I'd like for you to read it if you would. And so I said, well, what is it? And he had it in his shirt pocket, all folded up. And he said, Patty, Patsy kept this. Uh, since you wrote it to her, she's had it that whole time, and she said, uh, I'd like for you to read it at her funeral. So I agreed to that, and I've got a copy of the letter here. I had it on my computer and looked it up the other day, and uh, I'm going to read it uh, to you. I wished it was dated, it's not, uh, so I don't know exactly when I wrote it. I know she died in 2015, so it's sometime before that, probably, I'm going to guess around 2013 or 14. It says, Patsy, you came to mind this morning and I realized I haven't seen you for quite a while. I finally recall, uh, recalled many sojourns to the Union Meal with my fish sandwich, and I realized that I had never, pardon me, I realized that I'd never actually expressed what a friend you have been and how much I appreciate the friendship of both you and Don. Your life for things old, things country, crocs, baskets, and old paint has had a significant impact on me even though I may not have known it at the time. Even my children's preferences have in, been influenced through me by you without having known you. I remember a particular grungy green pie safe with hand-punched tins. It came from an auction in Martin County. There was a large old Victorian house on top of a high hill. The road to the house was dirt and rutted. Everyone had to park in a field at the bottom and walk the last quarter mile up the hill. These people had saved everything, even empty tin cans, their whole life, and the house, outbuildings, and several semi-trailers were chocked full. If there was one glass hen on a nest, there were two hundred. Evergreen had left bids on virtually every piece of furniture. I thought he had bought everything, but when I walked into the mule the following week, there sat this pie safe. I liked it, but my thoughts in those days went to visualizing it after Aunt Colleen had hand-stripped it and stained it walnut. You tried to convince me that it was much better because of those layers of old paint, but I wasn't buying it. He eventually sold it to Becky Jenkins. Today, I like to think that Don rescued that from Everett in a strip tank, and it is somewhere being loved, as you loved it, for its green paint, rather than in spite of it.
You're a special lady, Patsy Faust. I miss seeing you. Again, I want you to know how much I appreciate having been your friend, Luke. Uh, apologize for that. I'm going to do a video one of these days about uh, why it's okay for grown men to cry, and I don't know where that's self-justification because I get emotional sometimes. But uh, as you can tell, Patsy Faust was not only my Aunt Colleen's friend, but her and Don were my friends as well. I'm going to do another uh, video about this auction that I mentioned in this letter. In fact, I have to because uh, there's a couple of Aunt Colleen stories tied to this same auction. This auction was probably uh, as far as uh, going to an estate sale where they were selling antiques, that probably was the best auction I ever attended. And uh, the main problem with it was I was too ignorant to know uh, how good it was and uh, what I should have been doing there instead of what I was doing. But it was an auction that impressed me and I'm going to do a video. I'm going to do at least one that mentions it again because I, I, it's, like I said, there's a couple of Aunt Colleen stories tied to that auction. Uh, but I, I may do uh, a video one of these days just about that auction because there's lots of stories to tell about it and uh, the things that I saw there and the things that I uh, remember from it. In fact, it'll probably be in that auction I keep promising about selling choice. Uh, because it had some funny incidents about selling choice as well as some of the other stories that are associated with it. I've daddled around long enough about this. About this, I need to get on with uh, Patsy and Dom and and uh, Aunt Colleen.